Now, one part of time trial tech that we haven't yet gone into here on GCN is skin suits. And it might seem at first glance that it's a small part of the overall equation, but apparently there's been 35 watts at 50k an hour of power savings between over the last about 10 years. So we've come to Steve Smith, who's the brand manager at Castelli, to find out exactly how you guys have done it. So we've got with us uh, one of the Cannondale Garmin skin suits. That's this is a Ryder Hesedal suit for today. Okay. So. That looks quite small for Ryder Hesedal. He's deceptively small. Okay. Right. Okay, so let's let's go into exactly how you guys have refined skin suits then over the last decade and where have you found those watts? Mm -hmm. Well, if you look back 10, 15 years ago, I mean, look back at Greg LeMond winning on the Somme to the Z and that suit was fitting pretty bad. And so, uh, let's say, over the, over the years, we've refined on the fit, and that was where the biggest gains came. And then we start to work on uh, the actual construction, where the seams are placed, how uh, your fabric will fill in the armhole. Uh, we start to work on the lengths of it. And then the next, uh, next uh, challenge is on what's actually called the boundary layer. This is the airflow that's actually on the first three millimeters of the surface of the, of the skin suit. Okay, so yeah. let's, let's go back a step then. So once you know, when you're looking at refining the fit to minimize folds, so presumably that's on your stomach. Uh, picking the low-hanging fruit. Right? Okay, and so yeah. how many watts do you reckon you saved there? Um, that was a good, I mean, it depends, of course, on how badly the thing was fitting, but you've got, you can get about up to 20 watts from, from the, the fit and, and uh, making the thing fit correctly tight. Okay, so talk me through it then. I mean, it, at first glance, there is an awful lot going on there. No, we just spend a tremendous amount of time looking at fabrics from all over the world, looking at uh, how they're structured. Then we go through a process to figure out which fabrics have which characteristics and uh, which fabrics we need to put in which place. Do people make fabrics that are specifically aerodynamic, or do you take fabrics that exist and then test them, test how aerodynamic they are? Yeah, well, you know, there's no such, no such thing as an aerodynamic fabric, Okay. right? Because every single part of your body has air hitting in a different way. I mean, it'd be like your Porsche 911, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's got a spoiler on the back, so that must be fast. Like, so why don't you put them all over the car? No, you're carrying, wanting to uh, manage the airflow or each different part of the body in a different way. So that's why you see um, six different fabrics used on the skin. Six. Suit. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like, we've got some dimples going on, and you know, people kind of automatically assume dimples are fast because you know, golf ball technology and all that kind of jazz. But you've only got them on the shoulders and the back there. So, is that mm -hmm. specifically how the, the the air hits your shoulders and your back? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then, what about this random little patch here? Um, it's a transition patch. Let's call okay. it. Okay. So. Here we're transitioning the airflow from a laminar float into a turbulent flow. Do you test on specific riders or have you got like a generic um, dummy? No, because we have to have a rider riding and moving. Yeah. So in fact, we even use a wind tunnel that doesn't have the front wheel fixed. So we're replicating the movement of the rider because that in fact influences everything. Uh, okay. So um, we've got a fairly complex protocol we've developed over the years. So what's that looks like an enormous label on the inside of this. It is kind of floppy, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, for those of you that it offends your aesthetic sense, but this is, uh, we wanted to tuck the race radio in in a place where it was out of the wind. So you see some teams, they got it sticking right up there in the middle of the back and that, all that counts. So, so that's, uh, that fits under the rim of his aero helmet, I guess? Right behind his aero helmet. So that's one of the, uh, let's say, one of the free spaces where we can uh, put a radio because the head is already causing dirty air there. So what's the actual process then from, from thinking about how your skin suit is going to get fast to actually making it faster? Mm -hmm. well, in, in general, because I don't want to give away too many of our secrets, of course, um, but uh, you know, it's a fairly advanced uh, level because we're working with some of the top aerodynamicists in the world on the theory and, and they get into to start talking about things like a Reynolds number and, and boundary layer control and flow separation and all these fancy words. We take it from there, we actually uh, model, in some cases, individual riders in a CFD program to, to exactly uh, dial this in for the way they ride. Then we take that and apply uh, these different fabrics that we have, the re fabric research we've done to put the right fabrics in the right places. And then we make up a bunch of variations of that because the science isn't quite that precise. Then we go to the wind tunnel and we start blowing wind and, and uh, start reading numbers. But you've yeah. taken it to some pretty extreme levels there. Yeah, we're, um, we're, we've picked all the low-hanging fruit. We just did, uh, this spring, we did a huge project, a, something that was hoping to be the next generation from this. We invested probably 100,000 euros on 
the whole design and development uh, testing process and we got in the wind tunnel and we couldn't go faster than that. Yeah, finally then, um, how much resistance do you get from the UCI's regulations? I mean, are you, are you limited or are you, have you got quite a free roam with skin suits? You know, and the, the UCI limitations say you have to have a text, uh, textile, so you can't have coated fabrics. Um, you can't have anything that's a fairing, so I mean, we're very much still here in very much inside the UCI rules and uh, you know, the stuff that would be uh, contravening the UCI rules is pretty extreme stuff and it's probably not really within the, the fair play uh, sporting aspects of cycling. So. so here's a thought then, how much faster would Ryder Hesedell be naked than wearing your skin suit? Well number one I don't want to see that. No, okay. no, none of us do, yeah. Uh, he would be quite a bit slower actually. And how about if he's wearing just speedos? It'd be even probably better than naked but still pretty bad to see and he'd be slower as well. Um, we tried some of this working with our uh, triathletes where uh, in that world they've moved from open shoulders to covered shoulders and we can get about a 12 to 18 watt arrow gain from them just by cleaning up this area. So there we have it. Time trial skin suits do actually save you 35 watts at 50k an hour. Now if you want to see more tech videos specifically from the Giro d'Italia then you can click and watch one just up there. Or for generic Giro d'Italia videos that we've been bringing you every single day then why not click down there for that playlist. And then remember to subscribe to GCN before you go you can click on uh, Ryan Hesedell skin suit but you do it quickly because I've just got to uh, give it back because he needs it literally in about an hour. <laughs>